Hello everyone, welcome back to Warped Worlds. We're back in Planet Coaster and we're starting our first roller coaster for the park. And I've decided this one is going to be called The Heist. It's uh, The storyline behind it is basically that you're a thief. Um, and it's a heist to steal the crown jewels which you saw in the queue line, so that's a bit of a giveaway. Um, and you jump on this motorbike which Doing my research, it did say that it did exist in the 1920s. It shows how much I know about history. Um, so I thought it could fit into this area with no problem. Obviously, the coaster type we're using in the game is the motor motorcycle coaster, um, which I believe would be like a Vacoma booster bike in real life or something like that. They're the only... Um, you know, they're the only manufacturer I can think of that does this sort of coaster. Uh, one of the first things you saw me do then, um, well I started on the layout and then I realised that I have to move a few buildings around to make room for it, make room for the layout and where it's going to go. So as you can see that's what I've done there. Um, the launch has to be extended quite a bit from where it is because it, you know it's just too slow um, and it doesn't make it all the way around the layout. And we use up probably more room than I wanted to. I wanted it to be a bit more compact. Because the more room you take up, the more theming you have to do. Um, but the sort of plan is, as it comes out of the launch, we're going to have spotlights flashing round. And it's you know it's going to feel like a bit of a police chase type thing. And then you're flying over the streets of the city. And... Um, and then yeah back into the station at the end um, I haven't really worked out the whole storyline really as it's a theme park and obviously families will go on this it probably should have <laughs> um, the moral of the story where you eventually get nicked in the end for <laughs> trying to steal but I haven't really thought it out that much to be honest I'm not very good at storylines and stuff I just like building stuff that I like the look of um, so yeah, the other thing is I'm not the best coaster builder by any means, um, I prefer doing all the building stuff, so this probably isn't the most realistic layout or the most smooth layout you'll ever see, or rather the smoothest sorry, layout you'll ever see, but it looks fine, um, it rides as smooth as I could hope it to, there's a few little janky moments, but we can iron that all out later on. But like most of these coasters, it's pretty low to the ground. Um, a few sort of dips and bunny hills, a few helixes, that type of thing. Um, bits of, you know, banking and stuff. There's nothing really more to it. Um, I do create a station flyby moment for this coaster as well, which I decided sort of at the last minute thought would look pretty cool. And that made my building of the station itself much harder than it needed to be uh, but we'll get to that obviously later on in the video when I start doing the station itself sorry just had to shut the door there um, so yeah you can see it took me a little while to put this layout together and I kept trying to work different elements in and I wanted you know I wanted this layout well, the track, rather, the coaster itself, to be visible from from the paths and from the main plaza and everything. So it adds that element of excitement to the guests seeing it fly by and when they're walking around. Always something I like to see at theme parks. And so again, I think I had to move those buildings a further time to get room for that helix that goes over the main path there. And now you can see I'm just sorting out the colours for the coaster and the track and yeah I've, I've, I probably need to go back actually and look at what a 1920s motorcycle would actually look like um, if in fact they do indeed exist um, and try and you know get a colour scheme that matches something more realistic but we've got something that's fine for now anyway just as a base uh, I'm not really that bothered about the colours of ride vehicles to be honest that's something that I don't really spend that much time on you can see now then that we're starting in the station and that's what the bulk of this episode is going to be obviously 
station building for something like this. If you want to do it heavily themed like I want to do, it takes quite a lot of time. And uh, we start off with the with the floor design, which I cut a lot about because it's very repetitive and boring to watch. But you can see it's all in there now, and it's just tiled flooring because this is going to be like an arcade. Uh, this station. So not like an arcade where you go and lose on a claw machine, it's an arcade where you do shopping, so it's a shopping arcade, like a royal arcade I suppose you'd call it. Uh, many cities have these and I think yeah they date back to sort of 19, 1920s and possibly before, I'm not really sure, but I think it looks cool and um, yeah, I've, what I had to do because of the station flyby element, and I cut a lot of that out, I've probably just shown you a bit there. Um, so I'm not constantly looking at the screen. Um, but to get that all to fit in, I had to really work in a tight space and to get the queue line and stuff going underneath it and to make everything sort of coherent and block off any sections that I don't want you to see. Um, actually took quite a lot of doing and it was a really really long process and I was quite frustrated afterwards because I felt like I'd made hardly any progress um, so then I cut off just before you start seeing what I'm working on now which is this nice uh, fancy decor um, I had the more plain sort of pillar effect and I just yeah it was the end of quite a long planet coaster session and I'd had enough so I sort of rushed that um, and then after taking a break and coming back to it, I obviously built something that looks a lot better. And that's the style that we're going for, using those Victorian trim pieces, but overlaying them and rotating them and doing sort of cool effects with them that you wouldn't normally do. I like the way the, the effects that we get from that, and I think it looks believable for a 1920s shop front. So yeah, obviously they're just going to be facades all the way along. Um, there wouldn't be room to put a proper shop in there and I didn't want to do, you know, sort of crammed interiors. So I just get some uh, pictures of more luxury sort of um, retailers and put them in. You'll see what I mean in a minute. I didn't explain that very well, but yeah. Really, then it's just copying and pasting everything along this um, along this strip, so to speak, and obviously making it fit in with the big archway doors that we've got that lead from the queue and the exit into the station. So it all works out really well. Um, you can walk through the queue in um, whatever you call it mode, Tedja Cam mode, um, from guest level, and yeah. You shouldn't see any sticky through bits or anything, you know, that doesn't look right. So hopefully I've managed to cover all that up. Um, I've had a look through myself and it looks fine. But yeah, that was probably the most challenging bit, doing the tiny little area where the station fly through is with the coaster and the queue lines underneath. That, like I said, took a lot of time and really frustrated me. Uh, but I think it was worth doing because you will get to see a brief part in the cinematics where we get a station fly through um, at night and it, it looks really cool. Um, I think that's going to be a really good moment. You can see it sort of above you in the queue as you're coming in and then you'll see it in the coaster station when you're waiting to board. Even though it'll sort of be behind you, you'll hear it come past, you'll turn your head and look at it. Um, and yeah, it's not something that I think any coaster types like this have done before. I mean, the only heavily themed one I can think of this sort of model is the Tron ride at, Dis at the various Disney parks. Um, and yeah, I don't think they do anything like this, but every other booster bike I can think of has no little to no theming at all. Um, it's not a coaster type that you actually see in the real world that often, to be honest. There's not that many of them about. Um, but I think they're fun family rides. Um, they're not the most comfortable to ride. Um, especially if you're a bloke, for obvious reasons. Um, 
But yeah, like I say, I think it works perfectly with the theme that we're going for with this. So yeah, we're slowly, slowly getting there with different shop facades and having to find different images to stick in the, you know, on the screens uh, to fit the different size shop fronts. Obviously, the, the smaller one in the middle. Uh, the cool thing about this is because I've sunk the screens a little bit further back. As you move along the station, there's a sort of false perspective to it almost, uh, where it's moving. It looks like it's moving as a slightly different as it looks further back. So it, in a way, although you can tell it's a screen, it kind of looks a bit more realistic. Uh, I don't know if this is something that theme parks do in real life either. And it's really hard to explain what I mean by that. But um, yeah, just sinking a screen in a bit like that to emulate a shop front seems to work quite well. And then just covering up the, the sides and everything with um, just black basic shapes just to hide any you know, backstage areas or whatever. Um, and then because the coaster fly-through bit was so near to where all this is, I had to cover it up at the back as well. Um, but I wasn't too worried about that because as you're flying through there on the coaster itself, you're not going to notice too much. Um, so just as long as it's not too obvious that you can see all the backstagey bits, it's fine. And blueprinting it across then at this point and putting it on the other side uh, because there's no way in hell that I was going to make a completely individual bit. Plus, I think it needs to be pretty coherent on both sides. Um, is that right? Coherent or cohesive? It has to be the same almost, but obviously with different shops. Um, but yeah, it just mirrors the other side basically. So that's fine. And then just doing a few touches there. You can see actually a bit better on this side what I mean by sinking the screens back in and then placing in those shapes to cover up any areas that you might see. Um, it's much easier on this side because obviously we don't have anything behind it. So don't have to worry too much about uh, where it's going. There is a path behind it, but that's not sort of finalized yet. We haven't done anything with that. Um, you will be able to walk behind this and obviously we'll stick facades all along the outside to cover it all up. Um, around the back I'll probably go for more basic facades because I don't want to spend hours and hours detailing something. Um, although you will see it from guest level, it's not going to be you know, like a focal point like the main build buildings on the main plaza and what have you. So putting in some signs there, I thought these particular signs worked perfectly for a Royal Arcade like this. And then just putting some nice little plants, plant pots in, struggling to decide on the colours. I'm just going for this basic pink in the end, which works fine. Um, I don't add too much detailing into this station other than that, because I think we've got enough there. Just stick a little sign there, turn that particular... Um, shop into a sweet shop or a candy shop and yeah then we move on to the next bit of the build which is putting the roof on which i had a little go at before i even started the walls here just to see how it was gonna sort of look um and it is complete rubbish what i built so uh, i started afresh with this one and using these victorian trim pieces again um or deco bit. I can't remember what, what these are called, but they're um, really useful for merging together to make different detailing pieces and they fit perfectly with this theme. I know I've used them quite a bit before, um, but yeah, I'm yeah pretty happy with the look that I got putting all these together. And then we obviously cover it all up with some different pillars. Uh, that you can see going in now and we're gonna have to I mean a lot of this you won't be able to see from the ground but from a bird's eye view you'll see it so some of it we're gonna have to cover up but I do want because we end up using glass pieces for the roof as well I do want you to still I still want the glass to be there and for the daylight to shine in or if it's nighttime, the same, um, because 
and that's how an arcade would be and it, it, they normally have lighting coming into them or as far as I can as far as I know they do anyway and uh, that's just how how it, it I think it should look anyway um, but yeah just layering up some different pillars and stuff so that it looks good from inside which is my main focus at the moment the exterior to all this will be done in the next build probably um, so I'm not too worried about how that's going to look at this moment in time um, but yeah I can uh, see that I struggled a bit <laughs> getting all this together um, but really it's it's not a massive piece count or anything this roof which is a good thing because we're already getting up there I think we're on about 30,000 pieces at the moment and I'd say we're probably halfway through this section of the park so we're looking maybe 60,000 pieces for each themed area not sure how many I'm gonna have yet um, it sort of depends on performance as well for that reason as well I'm trying to limit the, the TMTK piece count I'm using I think in this video maybe I'll use two or three pieces so nothing too drastic it's mainly in-game pieces um, which you know the game rendering all the polygons it's still gonna slow down the frame rate eventually when you're using loads of pieces to build custom things but it's nowhere near as bad as when you do it with TMTK that really can start slowing the part down but I do like to use it sometimes for things that we just can't make or don't have in the game moving on then you can see the roof is done now and we are building the end piece this is where the launch is going to be so the launch will actually go under this uh, cylinder sort of structure that we've got with pillars and walls and what not wall pieces well, just basic shapes but um, made to work as wall pieces and yeah then I put in this nice little rotated roof structure which looks so simple in this video because I've cut so much out otherwise it would have been way too long all the fiddling about all the trial and error it took ages to actually put that together um, but it's less than 20 seconds in the video um, it's just how it goes I suppose but yeah like I said I didn't want to watch I didn't want you to have to watch me sort of struggle with that for ages um, and then finally we put the door we use the elevator door for the coaster launch section um, when you leave the arcade and go shooting out and start getting chased by the police um, so the idea of this is that it's a staff exit um, and you're not really supposed to have access to this area um, hence the no entry sign I've put there and yeah that basically concludes the build so we're going to go to the cinematics now and then in the next one we will try and theme the exterior of all this so thank you very much for watching and I'll see you all in the next video bye then